Morning everyone and welcome to Online Church from Newcastle. My name is John Teasdale and uh, I'm thrilled that you are able to join with us this morning. But, and please don't take this uh, the wrong way, I am hoping that there are less of us this week uh, than there were um, last week, for example, because that will mean, hopefully, that more of us are able to meet again in person. Indeed, some of our brothers and sisters are doing that right now, meeting uh, in person in the church in Jesmond. So how we thank God for the end of lockdown, how we thank God for the recent news about the vaccine too. But please don't worry if you're thinking about what's happening online. We're not going anywhere uh, online. We are committed to streaming every Sunday uh, morning and evening. So if you can't get anywhere in, in person just yet, or you're not ready to, to get back to, to meeting in person, or you've been trying to, but, but sometimes you might not be able to book because it's all booked up, don't worry, uh, we will still be here. Let me tell you about what's happening this morning. We've got uh, Dan McBride, who's gonna be uh, talking about the latest in our series of the I Am Sayings of Jesus. I wonder if you can guess which one it is. It's from John 15. And if I told you that it involved uh, fruit, would that give you a clue? I'll just leave that, see if you can guess before uh, Dan's talk comes up. We're also going to be encouraged to keep the end in sight in, in our series from uh, Luke's Gospel and Jonathan Redfern will be preaching from Luke 21. And as usual, we've got songs um, as well as readings and prayers by members of our church family here at Jesmond. Well, let's get to our first song now and sing our praise and sing our thanks to our God in the words of this classic hymn. It's my 
Well, it's hard to stay in your seat uh, for Ollie Knight's version of that song, isn't it? So uh, if you have been uh, standing up, uh, then feel free to have a seat uh, now uh, because uh, we're going to just move to a time of prayer together. And we're going to pray a prayer uh, that acknowledges that each one of us has failed to live the way that God intends for us to live. Uh, we've not loved either him or each other in the way, by the way that we've lived, by what we have said, by the things that have gone through our minds, uh, by the things that have come out of our, of our mouths. So let's take this opportunity now to ask God uh, for his forgiveness. Let's pray together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our fellow men in thought and word and deed, in the evil we have done and in the good we have not done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. And so may Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us. May he pardon and deliver us from all our sins. May he confirm and strengthen us in all goodness. And may he keep us in life eternal through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, it's almost time to uh, hear from Dan now. I wonder if you've guessed uh, what uh, the, his I am saying is today. Um, not long to wait. Before we uh, get to Dan, let me do two things. Let me remind you that there are some resources you can download. You can see that on the screen. You can just follow the links um, at the bottom of the screen as well. Um, and let, you can download those uh, for the kids to use now or, or later on. And secondly, let me introduce Chidabem Anieto, uh, who's a member of our Pathfinder youth group, and she's going to read from John chapter 15 for us now. Good morning. Our first reading is from John chapter 15, verse 1 to verse 8. I am the true vine, and my father is the fine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit he takes away, and every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me, and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so proves to be my disciples. Hi folks, over the last few weeks we have been finding out about some incredible things that Jesus said about himself. We've come to the final one today, let's dive in. And this time it all goes down on the very night that Jesus was arrested before he was crucified. It's a few hours earlier and he's enjoying a meal, his final meal with his disciples, his closest friends. So far, the conversation, it's been a little bit up and down with one of the disciples, Judas, being revealed a traitor and the rest of them stressed out about what Jesus has been saying to them, that he is soon going to be leaving them. And with all that stress and worry that the disciples are feeling, surely Jesus has something huge to say, you know, something that'll comfort them, reassure them. Well, here it is. Jesus said to them, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. Well, there you go, disciples. That's made everything better, hasn't it? Let's just think about plants for a while. I mean, what is Jesus doing? He knows that he is soon going to be arrested and killed and he wants to talk about gardening. What? Has he gone mad? Has the pressure got to him? No, not at all. 
In fact, Jesus is totally focused, focused on what he wants for his disciples, both them back then and us today. And it has everything to do with fruit. You see, here's what else Jesus said to them. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So he pictures a vine, you know, like in a vineyard in France. And attached to that vine are lots of little branches. And on those branches, fruit finally grows. Grapes in this case. The by being connected to the vine. And Jesus says that he is the vine and we are the branches. As long as we are connected to him, you know, by believing in him, by putting our trust in him and in his death on the cross, by living with him as our king, as long as we are connected to him, then we will grow fruit. Which might make you think, okay, Jesus, I get what you mean, I, I do, but just, just, just one little thing, except one little thing, what fruit? What fruit am I supposed to be growing? You know, are you saying, Jesus, that when I put my trust in you, I should get bananas for fingers and a satsuma for a head? You know, what fruit? What are you talking about? Well, there is another bit of the Bible that helps us understand what Jesus is saying here. And it says this. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. You see, Jesus is not concerned that we grow grapes or satsumas or bananas or anything else like that. No, he is concerned that we grow into the people that God wants us to be, that he made us to be. That is the fruit that Jesus wants to see. Because here's the thing, without Jesus, we are very different people, aren't we? You know, without Jesus, we can be really selfish, can't we? You know, putting ourselves first, making sure we get what we want, and likely hurting other people along the way. But if we are connected to Jesus, he can make us kinder. He can help us care more about others than we do about ourselves. And without Jesus, we can be filled with hate. You know, someone wrongs us and we are just filled with anger and revenge. But if we are connected to Jesus, he can make us more loving, you know, willing to forgive people rather than fall out with them. Or without Jesus, we can totally ignore God. You know, we don't trust him, we don't listen to him, we certainly do not obey him. But if we are connected to Jesus, he can make us faithful to God, reading his word, talking to him in prayer, and helping other people get to know him just like we have. That is the fruit that Jesus wants to see, and it only comes if we are connected to him, the vine, by believing in him, trusting in him, and living with him as our king. Now, there are three things that people sometimes think when it comes to all this fruit stuff that we have to be really careful about because they are dead wrong. And the first is people sometimes think, I need to grow fruit so that God will love me. You know, I need to be kinder. I need to be more patient. I need to be more joyful or God's not going to love me. Wrong. God already loves you. I mean, he sent his son to die for you. He loves you so much. And remember what else Jesus said that evening to his disciples? He said, you are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. If we are believing and trusting in Jesus, then he has already made us friends with God by his death on the cross. You know, God could not love us any more than he already does. Okay, that's the first thing. The second thing is the people sometimes think, I can't grow all this fruit. I just, I just can't do it. Well, you're totally right. You can't, none of us can, but we're not supposed to. What we are supposed to do is be connected to the vine, connected to Jesus, because that is how the fruit grows. And a little bit earlier in the evening with his disciples, Jesus said this to them, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, the Spirit. If we are trusting in Jesus, then God has given us his Spirit to help us be the people that he wants us to be. 
And then the third thing that people sometimes think is, I'm already loving, I'm already kind, I'm already forgiving. I'm already a nice person. I don't need Jesus. Well, here's what Jesus had to say about that. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. Because you see, you can be a nice person without Jesus. Of course you can. But you will not be growing the fruit that God is looking for. Because God is not interested in you just being a nice person. That is not what it's all about. No, here is what it's all about, says Jesus. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit. Because remember, God the Father, he's the gardener. He made us, he cares for us. And it brings him glory when we let him grow us into the people that he made us to be. That's what it's about, God's glory. So let's make sure that we stay connected to Jesus, the vine, and that we bring God the glory that he deserves. And let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for teaching us that you are the vine and we are the branches. You want us to grow fruit, to grow into the people that God the Father made us to be. And the only way we do that is to stay connected to you. Please help us do that and please grow lots of healthy fruit in our lives. Amen. Our next song reminds us that as we stay connected to Jesus, we grow to be more like him. So let's sing, I want to be like Jesus. Nice one, thank you, Andy and Cameron. Way too much talent, I think, in uh, in one family there. I lost count of uh, how many instruments uh, you guys play uh, between you. Fantastic stuff. And our thanks too to Dan for a really helpful talk uh, on uh, Jesus being the true, uh, true vine. We look forward to uh, the new series, uh, the new series of All Age Talks, taking us through the Christmas story um, starting next week. Well, we have a chance now to remind ourselves of some of the core things that we believe as Christians uh, by saying together the Apostles' Creed. Uh, the words will come up on the screen, um, so if you can, do join with me uh, as I read this out loud. Beginning with the words, I believe in God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. 
He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, we're going to move into a time of prayer now. Uh, we'll start by saying the Lord's Prayer out loud together. Again, the words will, will be on the screen. And after that, Andy Bell, who is one of our home group leaders here at Jesmond, will lead us in a time of prayer. So let's uh, pray the Lord's Prayer together, beginning with the words, Our Father. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Good morning. Heavenly Father, at this time of Advent, as we focus on the birth of your Son, Jesus, help us all to remember that your Church is built upon Jesus' life of teaching, his fearsome death and his miraculous resurrection. As the only perfect human being to walk this earth, we thank you for the gift of Jesus, who took the blame for all the mistakes that we have made and will ever make, so that we can be with you in eternity. Lord, forgive us when we go wrong then guide us back to you and the path that you have planned for us. Help us to remember that all that we do that is right and good, every change for the better, is through Christ in us. Such a gift should fill us with fearful gratitude. Our only hope is Jesus, for our salvation is wholly reliant on him, and we can do nothing to deserve your gift of forgiveness. So we simply worship you with unending thanks. Reveal to us what you want us to learn today in this service and in the upcoming weeks to Christmas. Grant us grace to learn your will for us and fill us with a burning desire to serve you more faithfully each day. Father, we pray for the carols by candlelight services, different like so much this year. We give thanks for all in the music group and Clayton TV teams who use this technology so well to your praise and glory. We pray that many who are not yet Christians will meet you tonight and at each service this week and put their trust in you. I pray for a sense of urgency in everyone to seek your forgiveness so that we can all be ready for your returning glory, for none of us know when that will be. As this recent lockdown is finished, we pray that we all remain alert and careful to protect ourselves and others. We give thanks for all working to perfect and supply a vaccine so that the country can pick itself up and start to rebuild. So that we can return to worship together and so that the youth groups can meet again safely. We pray for our leaders and that, that, that they make the correct decisions for the country. And we pray for more believers to become leaders. For as the psalmist wrote, unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labour in vain. Heavenly Father, guide us today and every day into your return in triumph, when we will join together to sing your praise for evermore. Amen. Thank you, Andy. Well, earlier on we heard Chidabem read from uh, John 15 for us, and it's uh, now the turn of her mum, so Chioma is going to read from Luke 21. Uh, that's the passage that Jonathan Redfern will be preaching on very shortly. Good morning. Our second reading is from Luke chapter 21, verse 34 to 38. But watch yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and cares of this life, and that day come upon you suddenly like a trap. 
for it will come upon all who dwell on the face of the whole earth. But stay awake at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that are going to take place and to stand before the Son of Man. And every day he was teaching in the temple, but at night he went out and lodged on the mount called Olivet. And early in the morning, all the people came to him in the temple to hear him. Hi, please find a seat and also Luke 21 verses 34 to 38 and let's pray. Lord, help us to urgently hear your word and to put it into practice in the power of your spirit for your name's sake. Amen. In Luke 21, Jesus says that the fall of Jerusalem 
a scale model of the final judgment of the world will happen. And it did in AD 70. And he says that he will come back to judge the world, which will also happen. The fall of Jerusalem shows us what the final judgment will look like and tells us that the final judgment will come. So how are we to respond? Well, in verses 12 to 15, Jesus says that we're to tell people how they can be rescued. And now in verses 34 to 38, he says his followers must live in the light of his return and not give way to the temptation to imitate people of the world. So three things for disciples of Jesus to take very seriously. Be careful, be watchful, and prayerful. You see, who were these words of Jesus chiefly addressed to? The worldly-minded Pharisees? The skeptical Sadducees? They were actually chiefly and directly addressed to Peter, James, and John, and the rest of his disciples. Verse 45 of chapter 20. In the hearing of all the people, of all those listening in, like some of you watching today. So these words were spoken chiefly and directly to those who'd given up everything to follow Christ. Yet even to them, verse 34, Jesus warns against drunkenness, dissipation, and worldliness. Dissipation here refers to the hangover and whatever else may follow from being drunk, which along with worldliness, is no way to be ready for Jesus' return. Even to his own disciples, he says, be careful. And also to you and me. Drinking during lockdown rocketed among the over 45s. Be careful. It reminds us to be humble. There is no Christian, however great we might uh, think they are or think we are, who may not fall into a great sin. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5 says that we must be clothed with humility and not think that we're standing so firmly that we're not in danger of falling. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12 says, Therefore let anyone who thinks that he stands take heed lest he fall. So be careful, be watchful and prayerful. And first, be careful. Watch yourselves. Be aware of the spiritual dangers to which you're exposed in this world. In verse 34, Jesus says, But watch yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the cares of this life. And that day come upon you suddenly like a trap. Now there's a wonderful future ahead for the Christian. Our final redemption, the coming of the kingdom of God, finally and fully. The new heavens and the new earth where all the terrible things of this world will have been removed. So don't miss out, says Jesus. Don't miss out by getting sidetracked into all that this world has to offer. It's so easy to take your eye off the ball. There are so many things that are able to distract us from keeping going with Jesus. Jesus mentions here, verse 34, being weighed down by the cares and anxieties of this life, worrying about exams and whether they'll happen, the job post furlough, the house, the planned extension, the new kitchen, fitting a green heating system, the mortgage, the new electric car, the right education for the children, about having enough money for Christmas or for the next holiday post vaccination. Living for the things of this world is very distracting. And before you know it, Jesus isn't then the most important person in your life. Following him just becomes one of a number of things that are competing for your attention and affection. He's important, but he's no longer directing your life at all in any meaningful sense. And then you certainly don't want to be or long to be with him anymore because, well, these other things of this life are so delicious and so lovely and you want them so much and they become most important. 
So now you're living for them and not for him. Jesus says, be careful. If that's how life is for you, verse 34 to 35, that day, judgment day, will come on you unexpected and you won't be ready for it. And if you've taken your eye off the ball, that day, a day that should bring you so much joy, will be a terrible day, verse 35. For judgment will, cut, will suddenly come on you as well. So be careful. Be careful to be living for Jesus and not for these other things. Tiger Woods wasn't being careful on the par 3 12th with Water Trap at the last US Masters. He took 10 shots on that short hole. Did you see it? He took his eye off the ball and kept on taking his eye off the ball and was caught in the water trap not once but three times and in the bunker trap twice. Suddenly the judgment was clear and on him he was out of the race and would not claim the prize. No one knows the day or the hour of Jesus' return, only the Father. That's Matthew 24, verse 36. But one point is very clear from Scripture. Whenever Jesus' second coming does take place, it will be sudden. God's servant must, therefore, be constantly prepared to meet Jesus Christ. So again, be careful. Be careful to be living for Jesus and not for these other things. Don't take your eye off the ball. Now, please don't misunderstand. Jesus isn't saying we have to be perfect to be sure of eternity. Of course not. Our salvation is dependent on him. The cross of the Lord Jesus Christ brings us salvation. But most of us know people who've drifted away from Jesus, weighed down by the temptations, cares and anxieties of this life. Suddenly everything to them seems far more important than him, and now Jesus doesn't figure any more in their lives. Jesus also speaks about this back in Luke chapter 8 and verse 14 in the power of the sower. And as for what fell among thorns, he says, they are those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by the cares, riches and pleasures of this life. And their fruit does not mature. A friend became president of a college Christian Union, or CU. Through his witness, his parents trusted in Christ. He then formed a Christian rock band. But sadly, that soon became just a rock band after being tempted with a contract and a tour, and then by the on-the-road lifestyle. And then he left his wife and child. And now he's nowhere spiritually. Another CU leader became a high-flying medic, but the job took over. He said he couldn't find a suitable church, and soon he, he felt he had no time for church, as he was working most weekends. And now he has no time for Jesus, at all. So Jesus says, be careful. Be careful that doesn't happen to you. Don't fall into the trap. One key message of the book of Hebrews in the New Testament is don't. Don't throw away your confidence in Christ. Don't drift or shrink back, whatever the pressure, but rather endure. Persevere to the end, looking to Jesus. So secondly, be watchful and prayerful. Watch and pray, verse 36. Be watchful and prayerful. Watch and pray is a vital part of how we to be careful in view of the second coming of Christ. Look at verse 36. But stay awake at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that are going to take place, and to stand before the Son of Man. That's Jesus Christ. Stay awake at all times. Now, now this doesn't mean you can't go to bed. Watching or staying awake is about being spiritually alert. So we're to watch to stay alert. We're to be on guard, remembering that evil is all around us, near us, and in us. We have a duty to fight against a treacherous heart, a world that wants to trap us, and a busy devil. 
So we must put on the whole armour of God and beware of spiritual sleepiness. That's 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 6. And we're also to pray, verse 36, with the Spirit's help. Watch and pray. We can't do all this on our own. We're to have a constant habit of serious prayer, to daily speak with God about our souls, and we're to especially pray for grace, to put aside every weight and throw off everything that may interfere with being ready to meet the Lord Jesus Christ. Praying for an attitude that seeks to flee worldly sins and concentrates on serving God. Praying that we keep on going with Jesus to the very end. And let's be praying for grace for healthcare professionals and former CEO exec members to watch and pray, to keep going with Jesus and to resist the world, the flesh and the devil. You see, a watchful person is a prayerful person, praying that you keep going with Jesus to the end. So let me ask you, do you pray? I mean, really pray. And if you do, what do you pray about? Are your prayers any different to the hopes and dreams of unbelievers? Unbelievers have hopes and dreams. You turn them into prayers, but essentially they're the same. When it comes down to it, are we really just putting into prayers the same aspirations as those in the world? A successful, healthy and comfortable life. If that's the main or the only thing we pray about, then frankly, your prayers are just an attempt to sanctify the aspirations of unbelievers. Jesus says our prayers should be about us keeping going as Christians to the end. Look again at verse 36. Pray you'll be able to escape all these things that are going to take place and to stand before the Son of Man, the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Your prayer life, if you have one, will probably reflect what your biggest concern is. Our biggest concern, our biggest daily prayer, shouldn't be about having this or that in this life, but about keeping going with Jesus, not giving up, not drifting, making the most of our lives now, and keeping with him through faith to the end, escaping judgment, and to stand before the Son of Man, which means to possess the ultimate salvation of being with him and like him in the new creation, the new Jerusalem, forever. If you're genuinely trusting in Christ, you have been saved, you are being saved, and you will be saved. We should pray daily that we grow in love for him and devotion to him and wanting to be with him above everything else. As we grow in love for him, we'll then look forward to that day and be focused on him coming back and not on the cares of this world. We'll so long for him to return because when we look at this life, what do we see? We'll be longing for that day when there'll be no more disease, no more terror, no more despair, no more loneliness, no more disappointment, no more abject poverty, no more persecution for following Christ, no more death, no more sin. So watch and pray. Watch and pray that nothing snatches you away from the wonderful heavenly prize that Jesus has won for us. Watch and pray that you may lift your head high, verse 28, when you finally see him coming on the clouds in power and glory because then your redemption is near. That's verses 34 to 36, which are so important. But very briefly, let's not forget verses 37 to 38. And every day he was teaching in the temple, but at night he went out and lodged on, lodged on the mount called Olivet. And early in the morning, all the people came to him in the temple to hear him. So as the people did then, let's come to him in faith, and listen to him every day through his word, putting it into practice, trusting and obeying him in the power of his spirit, 
how we need his help, his power and his guidance. Do you know what the last verse of Revelation says? And therefore the last verse of the Bible. Well, the book was partly given to encourage God's people to endure to the end, despite what the world throws at us, living in the light of Christ's return. That final verse of the Bible says this, the grace of the Lord Jesus be with all God's people. That's Revelation 22, verse 21. How we all need his grace. Let's pray. And let's take a moment to quietly respond in prayer to God. To bring ourselves before him. To bring others we might want to pray for before him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And if you'd like to discuss following Jesus more, then go to our website, whyjesus.org.uk. There's some free resources there and also an opportunity to sign up for an online discussion group. Now we're going to sing again. So let's stand.
Well, thank you so much for joining with us this morning. Uh, as usual, if you're local to JPC, do stay on stream following the final blessing for some notices uh, just for you. Um, please know that we are streaming again tonight at uh, half past six, where Jonathan Pryke will be wrapping up our series in Ephesians. He'll be encouraging us to fight the good fight. That's from Ephesians chapter six. But don't forget that service won't be happening as an in-person service uh, tonight. That's because our carols by candlelight services uh, begin tonight, begin at church tonight. So they're at 5 and uh, 8 p.m. Uh, I think there's still some places available uh, for those you need to book. I think there's still some places available for the, uh, especially for the eight o'clock. So if you wanted to uh, join a, a COVID secure carol service, uh, do take that opportunity tonight. Failing that, uh, there'll be opportunity all this week. So we're running these carol services uh, throughout the week, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, all at 8 p.m. Um, and then Saturday at 5 p.m. And again, next Sunday at 5 and 8 p.m. Just go to the website link that's uh, on the screen now. All the information is there, uh, as well as the links to take you through to enable you to book. Uh, there'll also be an opportunity to watch that carol service uh, online next Sunday evening at half past six. So that'll be the service that is streamed online at half past six, so nobody should miss out. But for now, I hope you have a, a great Sunday. Uh, remember to stay awake, to, to keep praying. And whatever you're up to, may you continue to abide in the Lord Jesus and allow his assured word to abide in you. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus be with all. Amen. Well, I'm back and uh, thank you for staying, if you have, uh, you obviously have, because here you are. Uh, it can get quite lonely in this post-blessing uh, slot sometimes. Um, anyway, no pity, no pity needed. Let me instead flag up a few things just from Ramsey's uh, weekly email. I've already mentioned Carols by Candlelight, so please do spread the word about those services any way you can, online, uh, word of mouth, uh, WhatsApp groups, you know, Facebook residence groups, wh whatever it might be. Just make sure people uh, hear about it and know that they need to, to, to book uh, uh, to, to come along to those. Uh, the other thing to, to say is that uh, we do need volunteers, both for these Carols by Candlelight services, there's still a few gaps where people can help serve, and for our services going forward throughout, uh, throughout December. It's going to be hard to make these services work without an expanded um, AV team, for, for example, um, and we really want to sort of improve and increase the, uh, our capacity in those services. So if you can help volunteer in any way, uh, either as stewarding or as a sidesman, um, to ensure the safety of others, but particularly on that uh, audio visual team as well. Please get in touch with either myself uh, or Ramsey Adcock, that would be great. Uh, let me just remind you that Wednesday is our next um, home group night. I hope you can make that. Um, if you're not in a home group and you want to be, uh, you know who to get in touch with, that's me, so do, do drop me an email. Uh, I'm the man for that. Then Friday, uh, the youth have their COVID Secure Christmas special. It's for all those in years seven to 13. It starts at 8 p.m., but you need to book, and there are instructions on, on how to book, uh, particularly if you're, you're coming from the same family that would make that better to enable there be uh, more people to attend on Friday night. But that's Friday night at eight o'clock. Don't forget that you can still donate to this month's communion mission giving, uh, which is for the work of the Bible Society, and um, the links for that are um, in the church email. And finally, uh, do join us in just a few moments' time for our next festive fun Zoom. Uh, really looking forward to that, if I can join in time from the uh, in-person uh, service at church. Um, but if not, uh, I'm sure I will see you on a, a Zoom sometime soon. Take care and have a great rest of the day.